It is my great pleasure to formally introduce the new head coach of the Florida Gators, Billy Napier. <laughs> Scared money don't make money, you know. We've got a goal here uh, to play a brand of football that creates a great sense of pride. It takes 11 people doing their job. We get to decide our future. Hey Gator fans, welcome to another edition of Building Back the Gators as we get closer to that season opener against number seven ranked Utah. Uh, that poll is out and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Hayes Carlin and Graham Marsh with you. And uh, Graham, it's getting close. How are you feeling about it? Uh, it is getting close. I'm feeling excited. Um, I saw a thing this morning. Uh, somebody, I couldn't tell who it was, predicted they go six and six. That was like the first thing I saw this morning. So that killed yeah. my vibe a little bit. Right. But uh, I think they'll be a little better than that. I see like eight wins maybe but and yeah. regardless i'm stoked for utah you're going to the game aren't you i'll be there i'll be at the game holt harrell will be at the game want to tell you about the personal injury law firm of harrell and harrell hopefully you won't need them but if you're ever injured call harrell and harrell at 251-1111 i've known the harrells for years going back to high school uh they're from jacksonville jacksonville firm and uh, big enough to take on anybody, but small enough that they're going to know who you are. They're going to form that relationship with you. Uh, so give them a call. Again, hopefully you won't need them, but 251-1111 for Harold and Harold. And uh, yeah, I talked to Holt uh, last week. He's excited about it. He's heading down. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to meet up and uh, watch, watch the Gators get a big win. Seventh versus 37th, because the Gators <sighs> are 12th in the also receiving, but it's like a two-point line. That's... I I wonder when the last time a line was that close with rankings that far big. apart. That like that that's probably that probably only happens every it's, five or so years. It's a great question. Like and look, you, the Vegas guys are a hell of a lot more accurate than the pollsters, right? Uh, so right. Uh, so it, it it you know Vegas thinks it's going to be a close game right down to the wire, and uh, you know that that's that's sort of what I'm expecting. I'm expecting Florida to pull out a a close game. Um and Anthony Richardson is the key. We've been talking you you cover uh Jaguars training camp like I do, so we talk Gators a lot. Um you just finished there. Uh I went there 100 years ago at to Florida. Yep, yep. So 2020 uh, grad. Yeah, yeah. December 2020. So uh um so we talk a lot of Gators out there while we watch the Jaguars and uh you brought up something about Anthony Richardson that I thought was really interesting. I wanted to hear you talk about it today. I uh, what makes Anthony Richardson unique and how might Billy Napier be best suited in utilizing him? Uh, yeah, when we were talking about it, I was basically just saying that given the personnel they have, given that this is not a re- this is not an overly impressive receiver room, in my opinion, um, they're fine. They have some depth and they have some guys that'll catch the ball and, you know, first down mover type guys, but they don't have... They don't have elite speed. They don't have elite size. They don't have big play threats, really, for the most part on the outside. But they do have good running backs. And in my opinion, they have a good offensive line. They have a good amount of experience there. And I think they'll be able to push some people around. And then you have an elite athlete with Anthony Richardson. So what I was telling you is uh, I think they need to play like the Ravens do, basically. With, and the Ravens, when you watch them, they don't play like any other NFL team. Like they've they clearly play different, and it's almost like a modern version of the like what Georgia Tech used to run the triple option. It's it's kind of like it's kind of a modern version of that. It's obviously a little bit different because you're really letting your guys throw the ball and make plays, whereas back then the quarterback was basically sweeping and handing the ball off and pitch, and that's all he was doing. But given the fact that you have an elite athlete at at your quarterback position, probably the best athlete on the team, I would say. And then you have good backs. You have a good core back. You have multiple guys that can tote the rock. And then you have an offensive line that can push people around. I would like to play the same way the Ravens do. A lot of reads, a lot of gives. Basically just a really physical brand of football. Running the ball constantly. You're always ahead of the chains that way. Um, and if you do that, all of a sudden, the fact that you may not necessarily have elite playmakers on the outside, that's okay because you have them in single coverage a lot and you're going to be able to scheme a lot of guys open. All of a sudden, if you've been, you know, you ran a read and then you ran it up the middle and then you ran a sweep and 
you know, you've run those types of plays back to back to back all the way up the field, and you've been getting first down after first down after first down, and you've made these linebackers come up. Now all of a sudden, maybe Ricky Pearsall can get free for 20 yards down the field. Maybe Justin Shorter can get 15 yards at the field. Now all of a sudden you can throw the ball a little bit. So the only caveat to this, this style of play, and that the Ravens figured out with Lamar, and hopefully Billy Napier and crew will be able to do it in Gainesville, you do want to allow Anthony Richardson to play a little bit of sandlot ball. And it's hard to play sandlot ball with, with a lot of option plays because it's pretty direct what you're going to do. And that requires 10 personnel, five receiver sets. That requires to spread things out a little bit more. So for, for that, for that I'd, like, I'd like a little bit of sandlot ball. But, but for the most part, to what I say, if they play offense just like the Ravens, I think they'll have a good amount of success. I think it's a really strong point because... Again, you, you don't have guys where do you want Anthony Richardson taking a five-step drop and evaluating what's down the field? I mean, what kind of separation is he going to find? Uh, it also doesn't seem like it really suits his skill set yet. I mean, maybe he becomes that, uh, but he isn't an experienced player. Uh, and, you know, if you're going to, again, you don't have a Charleston Southern and then Furman and then Vandy before you get to like a tough game. I mean, right. you're playing one of the best teams in the country right out of the gate. Right. And so, you know, it, it does seem like if you could harness some of that, is he Lamar Jackson in terms of speed? No. Although he's not that far from it. If he runs <laughs> he is a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. I mean, Lamar's not running a 4-1. Right, I mean, right, you, know, right, we, right. you know, he's probably somewhere in the, he's faster than Anthony Richardson, but I don't know that it's leaps and bounds. I think probably the biggest difference in terms of their running ability is Lamar's shiftier. Correct. Absolutely. L- Lamar has better horizontal movement. No, no doubt about it. It is more agile, absolutely. And uh and probably has a better burst. Yeah. Uh but it's but it's close. And uh so yeah, I agree. Cause if 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 Florida can make the defense basically say, okay, we have to sell out to keep Anthony Richardson from just running all over us, then it is going to create some things. Uh, and it and it does feel like they have to do that to benefit a receiving tight end group that isn't that great. So uh, it's going to be fun. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing how uh, this offense comes together with Anthony, Anthony Richardson. It seems like you know from reports that uh, you know they kind of struggled in a scrimmage that they had over the weekend offensively. You know Billy Napier kind of downplayed it, and you know it, it again. You don't know. You know, they're so far into camp. It's like. You know, we're kind of seeing this with the Jaguars a little bit. They just had their worst offensive practice. And, uh, you know, you wonder when a defense has just seen you day in and day out for weeks and weeks and weeks, how much of an advantage do they now have over right. you? Are you going to be able to go up and down the field in live action on an, a defense that knows exactly what you're trying to do? Um, but it is going to be fun because that's the key of their season. I mean, Anthony Richardson is the key to are they going to win six games or are they going to be a surprise team that – can win 10 games and, and be in the New Year Six. And if Anthony Richardson is the key to your offense, why not let him do what he does best? Right. Which, again, is playing some sandlot ball and just making plays and then also putting him in positions where he can hand it or give it. And then think of, I'm not the first person to make this comparison, but think of Auburn in 2010. Cam Newton did not have an elite receiving core around him. He didn't even have he didn't have an elite backfield. I don't know if Florida has an elite backfield. But I know they have a mm-hmm. good backfield. Yeah. What made that offense work was Cam was such a threat to run, and not just side to side like Lamar does. Cam was more of a downhill guy, right? Kind of like Tebow. Cam was a downhill. He'll run you. He'll get five extra yards. He was such a threat to come downhill that. After you do that over and over and over again, all of a sudden those linebackers are coming up, they're right over their heads. And Florida could do a similar thing. Probably in terms of an athlete, Anthony might be better comparable to Cam Mm -hmm. than Lamar. Because, again, Lamar is so explosive and so fast and so shifty. He's a little thinner than those two guys. Anthony has a little more size to him. Um, But, yeah, I think that is the key. And to your point about Anthony being the key to their season, you need to make him as comfortable as possible. And I don't think five-step drops are how you do that. Yeah, and and the other thing, too, is it's interesting. Florida's never had the number one pick in the draft, <clears throat> ever. Uh, and uh, it's is the NFL shifts to more of a, of a traits over production uh, league. 
it's interesting because Anthony Richardson really might be like this year's version of Trayvon Walker. Like even if he doesn't have a crazy season, like I'm not saying 45 touchdowns and four turnovers. I mean, uh, but if he has a good season, uh, he don't, he'd only have a, a one year under his belt in terms of, of really being the starter. But um, you know, we were talking to our, our friend Denny Thompson yesterday at One Ocean, and, uh, and I asked him, I said, have you seen Trey Lance uh, ever in person? He said, yes. And, he, and, he, and I said, how comparable is Trey Lance to Anthony Richardson athletically? And he said, very comparable. Uh, there are certain things that Anthony does better. Anthony's faster. Uh, but, but they are comparable in terms of their size and things like that. Trey Lance went third overall. And played like one game his final year at a Division II school. In a very talent-rich draft. Right. Quarterback yeah, talent-rich Correct. Draft. And a perfect point. In a draft that Trevor Lawrence was in uh, and, and went third overall. Uh, so I don't think it's ridiculous to suggest it could happen. It, would I bet on it happening? No, I wouldn't bet on it happening. But could I see it? Uh, I could. Because from a trade standpoint, he's got everything you could ask for. And he seems like, you know, from hearing Frank's interview with him at SEC Media Days, uh, to hear Denny talk about him as a person, I mean, it seems like he is really wired for superstardom, but to be able to handle it really well and maintain, you know, a, a team first, grounded, humble demeanor and and carry that forth. So uh, I'm I'm incredibly excited about him. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, big time recruiting uh, news this week for the Gators. Let's uh, touch on that. So they're now 10th. Uh, what did you think about the uh, the additions that they made over the weekend? I think with it, hu- huge thing here is like a big concern was the defensive line. If they were going to, if they had gotten enough yet in recruiting in the defense. Well, well they addressed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three, four star defense alignment. Right. That'll do it. That'll do it. One of them's in the top 100, I think top 75. Yeah. That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> you get another IMG guy. Right. Um, I don't know if IMG does. I, I don't know if you, you could call anything an IMG pipeline. Yeah. Because I mean, if everybody that plays football there is a D1 star. Right. But it's more of a pipeline than they had, which was nothing. They had nothing. So yeah, clearly Billy Napier is in good, is has a good relationship with the coaching staff down there, and that's a huge win. Clearly, he's turned the tables on the recruiting in Northeast Florida. Huge there. So mm-hmm. those things that are not only helping him win battles right now as we're seeing them unfold, it's. I think he's making strides in places that are going to help him win some wars later. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was looking at it, and Florida right now has 20 commitments, 18 are uh, four-star prospects, so that's outstanding, uh, a 90% ratio there. And uh, when you look at you know where they stand, uh, there are, there's a lot of people that believe they're going to get Cormani McLean, the talented cornerback out of uh, Lakeland, who's the number three overall prospect in the country, according to 24-7 sports. So that obviously would be gigantic. He's the number one player in Florida. Um, <clears throat> but when you look at the depth of the class, you mentioned it, uh, that uh, Kelby Collins is a top 70 kid. <clears throat> you look at where they, where they are right now, you need about eight guys in every recruiting class to hit for you, to, to have a, a really strong team. If you do that year in and year out, you're going to win a lot of games. They don't all have to hit. That's why recruiting rankings for a player individually don't mean much, but for a class are gigantic. Yes. Because you don't need all 25 of those guys to hit. You need about eight of them. Correct. So you're playing a percentage game, and you look at what Florida has right now in terms of national rankings. They have the number 70, 72nd, 140th, 143rd, 159th, 169th, 199th, 201st, 204th, 212th, 221st. So they have 11 of with the, the potential top. to get three. Correct. Uh, so that's the thing. Like they right now, I mean, you don't even need all those 11 to hit. Uh, and they're going to add. I mean, Billy Napier, I loved it this week. The facility opened and everybody's, you know, gaga over that as they should be uh, and incredibly excited. And Billy Napier made a comment in his press conference because obviously he can't talk about specific recruits. Uh, prospects, but he said, you know, the Gators aren't going away on the recruiting trail. And so it, it does feel like they are just getting warmed up. And uh, it is going to be really fun to see where this class ends up. I think 
Cormani McLean would be the home run yeah. pick. Like, uh, obviously, it's a home run. It's number three player in the country, of course. But what I mean by that is the Cormani McLean is the game winning field goal. That's what it is. It, yeah. it, like, a good game. You played a good game. Um, solid guys. You picked up good guys that you feel confident about. You've hit important position groups. Now you have a guy. They've already gotten some guys that Bama wants, that Georgia wants, that Ohio State, one of the big boys want. And to be a big boy, you got to beat the big boys, right? And that starts in recruiting. Cormani is obviously a guy that everybody wants. Anybody who follows recruiting at all knows exactly who this guy is. They know exactly who he plays for. They've seen his tape. They know he's big time. Doesn't it make you feel comfortable that he plays DB? Because it's the best recruiter on staff. Yeah. <laughs> Coach yeah. his position. Right. Corey now, Raymond, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm at a point where I believe pretty strongly in each position group and yeah. how they've recruited. I, I think most of the coaches have shown me that they can recruit at a good level, which was a big concern, by the way, when Billy took the job, because obviously not in Corey Raymond's case, because he, mm-hmm. he had been at LSU, but there were there was a little bit of a concern, I think, that he was maybe taking too many Louisiana guys with him. Mm-hmm. Not enough Power 5 coaching experience on his on his staff. I think that was a fair criticism, and that was something I was a little bit worried about. They're showing that they can compete at this level, and they're showing that they can win those recruiting battles. But it does feel good that Core Raymond's going to be the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the lead guy. No question about it. And, and, and you brought up a great point about the defensive front. I mean, if you're going to win national titles, you've got to have strong quarterback play, and you got to have a nasty defensive front. And uh, and they, they're well on their way to building that. It's really exciting, and they're doing great in Florida. Uh, you look at the top uh, 50 players in the state of Florida. Florida has nine of them right now. Uh, again, you'd like in years forward to have more guys at the top of that list. And if again, if they get Cormani, then they've got the top player in the state. But right now, they've got 16, 33, 34, 37, 39, 40, 41, 43, 45. So again, really outstanding depth there. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see uh, as they continue to develop. And um, so, sorry to cut you yeah, off. Go ahead. To, to your point, looking at the 247 rankings, I don't have them right in front of me, so I haven't you know, totally broken this down, but just you, you're able to tell by looking. They're 10th right now in recruiting. There's two or maybe even three teams ahead of them that would not be ahead of them if it weren't for some three stars. Right. So that's another big thing to factor. Dan Mullen had, I think, a top seven class in 2020, I think. But that's with a bunch of three stars mm-hmm. that are just adding to that rank. That doesn't mean that doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a bunch of special guys. Right. Maybe one of the, some of the, some of those guys are going to turn out to be Kyle Trask and it's great. Yeah. But to your point, it's about the numbers. The more four stars you have than three stars, the more likely they're they are to be better. The more five stars, the more it, it's it's a numbers game. It's a probability game. And with Napier getting these blue chip guys and being this ranking, so the blue chip ratio is higher, you're leaving yourself a much higher ceiling to potentially even grow to. So Mullen got some top 10 classes, but that like 7, 8 range, that was the very best it was going to be because you're not going to get the top class, the top 2, 3, 4 without, without Cormani McLean's of the world. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's been a lot of fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Appreciate you jumping on. It's uh, he's the best producer in the business, and, and now he's the best <laughs> co-host. Appreciate it, Grant Marsh. Uh, that's going to do it for us on Building Back the Gators. I want to thank the personal injury law firm of Harrell and Harrell. Uh, again, I've known Holt and Julie Harrell since high school. They're fantastic people. They're from here. Uh, and uh, they're a Jacksonville firm through and through. So uh, they're going to be able to to take on anybody. They're they're large enough to do that, but they're local, and they're gonna they're gonna know who you are when you call them, and that is so important. Uh, so hopefully you won't need them, but if you're ever injured, call Harold and Harold at two five one 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 one. This is the third straight summer they've sponsored our Florida Gators football podcast. We certainly appreciate that, and uh, can't wait to see them. Uh, won't be long at the swamp when uh, the Utes roll in. Uh, as we get college football's first big upset of the season when the Gators take down Utah. It's going to be a lot of fun. For Graham Marsh, I'm Hayes Carlion. Thank you so much, Gator fans, for watching Building Back the Gators.